everyone. Welcome to Museum Monday. And today we're going to be talking about the late Victorian period. So as Susan already discussed about the early Victorian period, she looked at different silhouettes like this kind that had the corded petticoats to help puff it out. And she also briefly talked about our hoop skirt which is still here. Our mannequin got a little shorter since last time, so um, hoop's still there though, I promise. <laughs> so today we're going to continue talking a little bit about the hoop skirt, and then we're going to go into talking about the bustle period, mainly because there's a lot to talk about with the bustle period, so we'll focus more on that than on the hoop skirt part. So the volume of the hoop skirt my model here, really reached its, um, its uh, biggest period by the 1860s. And by this, I don't just mean that it was so popular by then, I mean literally the volume of it was huge. So really think Scarlett O'Hara and Gone with the Wind. I know Susan used that already, but that is exactly what happened. The volume on the skirts got so, so big. And these large skirts, limited movement of women. If any of you have been to our museum before when we have our living history reenactors here and you see the women in the hoop skirts, you can't pass them easily. <laughs> you really can't. So um, the bell shape that was really popular with this really starts fading out of fashion. And with more people um, wanting to do more activities outside of the home, the hoop really limited what they could do, so they needed to find a simpler silhouette. So this kind of kicks off the start of the bustle period. And let me just show you some quick images, give you an idea of the period that we're talking about. So we have over here, this is about 1865, and you can notice how big the hoop skirt is, and then this is the height of the first bustle period. Then there's a very slender silhouette. Uh, and then by the late 1880s, there is another bustle period. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So we go from this hoop skirt into kind of a mo uh, modified hoop skirt called the crinolette. <laughs> I hope that's the right way to say it. But you'll notice it has the crinoline in here with the big hoop skirt and into this crinolette shape. So the big emphasis at this time is that it's flatter in front instead of with all of the volume from the hoop skirt. So as we see, the rings of the hoop come all the way out. So how this silhouette with the crinolette looked is if I just kind of pull the back of the hoop skirt out, what you'll notice is the front part here is nice and smooth and flat, and most of the volume is pushed back this way. Now, in a practical sense, this is much easier to move around in than a large hoop skirt that goes out here. If all the volume is in the back, much easier to walk past people. So this crinolette, was the start of what we would eventually be calling the bustle period. And this is the early bustle period. One of, sorry, looking for my other picture. One way to achieve this silhouette would be either with a modified hoop that either cuts off about mid thigh and with most of the bulk of it in the back or by having a smaller hoop skirt like this one, and then this extra padding of like a half hoop almost. So it doesn't go all the way around the front of the woman, it just goes and pushes it in the back. Sometimes this style is called the lobster tail or the crayfish because of the shape, it looks very similar to a tail of those animals. <laughs> The structure would be topped off with multiple petticoats as well, just so that you can't see the lines. So even with our hoop skirt here, you'll notice 
there's a petticoat sitting on top of the actual hoop skirt. It's the same thing so you can't see those rings. Um, and then the other thing, when this skirt is a good example, it has these flounces, pieces that you can kind of pull up. Um, this was very popular during this period. And let me show you on my skirt here. So you'll notice that this has some flounces on it right here. How they made those wasn't just by the shape of the underneath part with the bustle. It also was made with these ties. Now this one's a little different. It has a ring with it as well. But a lot of times it would just have these two ties. I was going to try and change it. Let's see if I can get it untied. <laughs> Maybe not. So what would happen though is you could loosen this. You can see how long it is. So that the flaunts, the bounce from it isn't as big. Or uh, you could tighten it so that it's not dragging on the floor as much. And the way to really notice the train is when I hold up the skirt, you can see the back part under here by my feet. So it's showing it really creates like an elliptical shape that really pulls out in the back compared to some of our earlier skirts, like this one, which is completely round. It does not have that elliptical shape. So along with the bustle padding, the, um, the skirts would also have extra detail and lots of um, extra flounces and added things. So there might even be an overskirt similar to how this one is and is just to expand the shape and give it that really structured look of all the decoration in the back of the skirt. Let me find my other example here. So this is another timeline picture and we'll get to the th or two other pictures that are here. But if you focus on this one that says 1830, uh, or 1873, sorry, one thing you'll notice is it's a really big shape in the back. And the waistline, I know it's a little hard to see in this image, but, but compared to the other two, the waistline is much higher. It's actually sitting even higher than in the earlier Victorian period. It's somewhere between the early Victorian period and the uh, Regency that the waistline is kind of sitting at at this time. The reason for it is so you can emphasize the skirts more. Um, it just wasn't quite as high as the Regency though. So thinking somewhere about here instead of right under the bus line. Um, by the late 1870s though, this style with the very big poof starts to fade. And while the bustle period will come back, a little later, it doesn't ever come back quite this big. So this was the most time that, or this was the period that had the biggest volume in the back. So between the bustle, uh, the early bustle period that ends about the 18, uh, mid 1870s, there is the slender style cuts, which really emphasize very sleek dresses that go all the way down to the ground and they're very tight compared to the other periods. And they were so tight, in fact, sometimes it was very difficult to walk. <laughs> sometimes the, uh, the round part for the skirt where you would walk, instead of being this large, sometimes it only had about uh, like a 16 inch circumference. Like it was very, very small, it was very hard to walk. This period doesn't last very long because they're still continuous, continuing with that emphasis on the back of the skirt. So the bustle becomes popular again. So I'll go back to my picture. So this is the slender silhouette. And then this is the return of the bustle starting in the early 1880s. Now this style is created using more of a structure like this. So it's much smaller than our crinolette or even my earlier picture. Oops. 
with that, with the small hoop and then the half hoop skirt under or over it. It's just a simple structure that's attached to petticoats now. And with this, the silhouette changes again. So let's see if you can notice on here, but you'll notice her waistline is much lower. So from being a little higher up during the early bustle period, it now goes lower to emphasize the long torso. And this shape will continue later into the Edwardian period as well that we'll talk about next week. So along with the ex uh, extending the torso, the bodice and skirts at this time became a lot more tailored. So this outfit is a little later, but it really emphasizes the tailoring made. You can see the nice panels on it. It's very structured. And with the lower uh, torsos, that also means that the corset, and you guys might remember the one Susan showed, it kind of ended down here, kind of at your stomach area. These would have extended a little further where it's actually touching onto the hips. And that silhouette, once again, will continue into the Edwardian period. Um, the sleeves on the bodice were typically very slender by the period, but going into the 1890s, the structure of the sleeve starts changing a little bit and we go back to that sleeve of, or leg of mutton sleeve that Susan mentioned earlier too. So that style gets revisited and it does eventually get pretty poofy, but this is an early example of what happened with that sleeve. Um, the other part of it with the skirts is they're still very structured and with the shape um, made from this structure, you had a lot of them that were kind of like this, like a cage almost with, um, with the wires. And what was really unique about this period of the bustle is that these ones would actually collapse when you would sit. So that was really interesting. So you could sit easily without having to worry about a large structure behind you. If any of you have ever sat in a hoop skirt, you would understand. They're very difficult to sit in. <laughs> um, but that structure is totally what holds up the skirt. And by the end of the 1880s, the bustle is no longer popular and in favor, but they still kind of keep the shape of the skirt, more of that oval shape. And you'll notice on my mannequin here, she still has the skirt shape is still kind of oval where there's more of a train in the back and it still has a little bit of a poof in the back and the way that's made on her is her petticoats but small bustle pillows also become popular during this time too or going into the Edwardian period start becoming popular to keep more of a natural looking silhouette with a little added structure in the back poof it out. So this is a perfect segue into our Edwardian period, which we'll talk about next Monday. And just remember to stay tuned for our other Fashion Fridays. Jared will be returning once again for his men's fashion. We'll see you next time. Bye.